Hello friends, this video on diversity in living organisms part 4 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. What should be the basis of classification? As I mentioned in one of the previous slides that there could be there could be so many possibilities. You can take the size, you can take cellularity, you can take body organization. So you have a lot of options to select the basis of classification. But what is going to be the right option or what is going to be the right basis of classification? So let us again take one example, I mean not a new example, the same example which I was talking about that when you shift to a new house, how do we actually arrange things to make things better and simpler? So with that example, we will try to find out that what is the basis or what is the thought that is in our mind when we try to classify objects. So let us take the same example once again. So maybe this will help us to understand what is the basis or what is the thought behind our mind which actually helps us to classify objects. So now when you had these couple of things, what did you think in your mind that made you keep certain things in the kitchen, certain other things in the study room and some of the things in the bathroom? That's because what we did, see here, we sent the mixer grinder to the kitchen. We also sent the carrot to the kitchen. Do you think that the mixer grinder and the carrot share a lot of similar characteristics? No. Right? So the carrot is a vegetable. Mixer grinder is an electrical appliance that helps you to grind spices. Right? So they are not exactly similar things or it is not that they share a lot in common. But they share a very basic property in common and that is that they both help in cooking. Right? Even though their appearance are dissimilar, even though they do not do the same job, but the basic function why they are present in my house or in your house is that both of them help us in cooking. Similarly, when I talk about the microwave, this also helps us in cooking and that is why it is present in our house. So the purpose of microwave being present in the house is that it helps in cooking. And anything which helps in cooking should be in the kitchen. Similarly, anything which helps us in our studies should be in the study room. Right? So even in the study room, if you look at the objects which you have, that is the books, the notebooks and the pens, they are not similar objects. Pen is something different, eraser has a different purpose, pen is used for writing, eraser is used for erasing stuff, books to read, notebooks to write down. So they all have got different purpose, but they all help in studying. And that is the purpose because of which they are present in my house. So what are we looking at when we are actually keeping these articles in three different rooms? We are looking at the basic characteristics. That what is the reason because of which, what is the basic reason for the presence of these objects in our house? And the basic reasons for all the kitchen objects is cooking. Basic reason for all the objects which are in the study room is they help in studying. Similarly, the basic characteristic of all the objects which are present in the bathroom is cleansing. Maybe to clean your teeth, to clean your body. So it is they all serve the same purpose and that is why we have classified them into three different rooms. Right? So what do we, what do you conclude from this discussion? We conclude that when we try to classify objects, when you have so many different objects and you want to group them into different classes, the characteristic which you look for is the very basic characteristic. So the basic things should be looked for because of which they are all present there. Right? So now let us suppose now that I have kept all the objects in different rooms. As I mentioned before also that now if your friend comes and asks you for your physics book, then you will have to search all the objects which are present in your study room. But now let us suppose if you don't want to spend a lot of time even in searching in your study room, what can you do? You can organize your study room itself. Maybe you can keep your mathematics book in one rack, the chemistry books in another rack and the physics books in the another rack. So now if your friend comes and asks for your physics book, 
you straight away, as soon as he tells, he wants physics book. So it is a book, it is something related to study. So you directly go to the study room. And again in the study room, you have organized selves subject wise. So you directly go to the physics rack. And now you have to select one out of these four books. So your job is pretty simple now. So what did you do here? Here we have done sub classification. So first you classified all the objects of the house into three different groups that is into kitchen, bathroom and study room. And now even inside the study room, what did you do? You sub classified them into different classes. So now your, your work became even simpler. Right? So now you are understanding the idea of classification. So here again, what is the characteristic which you looked for in order to classify the books? The subjects. Right? So when you classify them as per subjects, it does, does, it, that doesn't mean that all the four maths book which you have in your rack are the same books. Because you are definitely not going to keep the same books, same set of books for four. You will not have the same book score at your house, right? You will just have one book. But maybe you have got books of different authors of mathematics. So all your mathematics books are different because they are written by different authors. Their contents are different. But they all belong to the same category of the subject. That is, they all belong to mathematics. That is why they are all in the same rack. So here also we are looking for the more basic characteristics. Right? Even though even inside that, maybe in your maths rack, you will have some 10 different authors book. So again, there you have to search. So are you getting my point? Right. So now, while you were arranging the, when in the previous slide, what I shown you, when you had all the objects messed up everywhere, if that time you would have told that, okay, how I will arrange these objects is that I'll keep objects uh, which are related to mathematics together, related to chemistry together and related to physics together. Would you have been able to arrange things like that? No, because these are not the basic characteristics. Because the stuffs which you had, for example, the soap, for example, the knife, the mixer grinder, they neither belong to physics nor chemistry nor mathematics. So where will they go? So you will not be able to classify them with these characteristics. So whenever we are trying to classify objects, we will have to look for the most basic characteristic. So the basic characteristic is going to be the one using which you can classify each and every object. Just now as I told, if you would have taken this physics, chemistry and maths as your basis of classification in the previous slide, you would have not be able to classify them because the, there are there would have been a couple of objects which do not fall in any of these classes because these are not basic characteristics. Had it been the basic characteristics then all the objects will have to fall in one of those classes. Clear? Okay. So now I'll take another one example to clarify this. So because I don't want a single piece of doubt regarding this in your mind. Right? So so far we have discussed how are we going to study the diversity in living organisms by classifying them why we need classification that is clear now we are talking about the basis of classification what should be the basis of classification so here you see a bunch of vegetables fruits and flowers right so again in order to classify them we will look for the more basic characteristic right so what do you think would be the more basic characteristics what should be the more basic characteristic to organize them? There, you have many options. For example, you can organize them as per their color. Color could be one option. That means those which are green in color, you put them together. Those who are yellow in color, you put them together. Those who are red in color, you put them together. That is one option which you have, right? You can put them according to size. Small vegetables together, middle sized vegetables together, again long vegetables together. So what do you think should be the correct basis for classification here? I am talking about the more basic characteristic. Now I will tell you what are the disadvantages of choosing a wrong characteristic. For example, if I talk about size. Now when you take size as a basic characteristic, size is not constant, right? Here you can see two different carrots. They look different. This carrot and this carrot. They look different. They have got different sizes. So now what are you going to do? Even though both are carrot, 
that means both have almost every all similarities yes that may there may be, be their shape and size will vary a little but otherwise both of them are vegetables both of them will taste the same so are you going to group them in separate categories just because their sizes are not the same no right so that means size is not going to be a correct basis for the classification similarly if i talk of color so here you can see if i talk of color red so that would mean that this capsicum which is red in color will fall in a different group this capsicum which is green in color will fall in a different group and this capsicum which is yellow in color will again fall in a different group so even though all of them are the same vegetable and they taste the same they are actually the same thing just because their colors are different you are going to categorize them in different categories is that right that is not right so what do you think would be the more basic characteristics so here what all do you have we have fruits vegetables and flowers so why can't we classify them as put all the vegetables together because end of the day all of these are vegetable right whether it is capsicum or it is carrot or it is cabbage they are all vegetables so we put all the vegetables together similarly we put all the fruits together whether it is red in color or green in color but they are all fruits and we put all the flowers together so do you think this is a correct way of classifying because now if you see even though this mango and this um, capsicum they are of the same color but they are actually two different things so there is no point categorizing them together because they are absolutely different things mango tastes something else capsicum tastes something else they are totally different so we can classify them separately right now if you see as i talked about sub classifications now in order to classify things further what you can do here you have this is a cabbage this is again a cabbage this is a carrot this is again a carrot this is these are all peppers right so how you can classify you can classify the carrots together the cabbages together and the peppers together so this is your sub classification so again the sub classification is based on the more basic characteristics so again you are not going by size or color or something silly like that so again how are you classifying things based on which particular vegetable it is because color really doesn't matter that much clear so now if i ask you to sub classify it further so in that case what you can do maybe you can classify all the red peppers together you can classify all the yellow peppers together and all the green peppers together so in that case your color would become the more basic characteristic correct so now you understand what i'm trying to say so whenever you want to classify things we need to look for the more basic characteristic only then we will be able to classify objects correctly so here also in case of fruits also for sub classification we have put all the apples together all the mangoes together even though you can see that the apples look quite dissimilar from each other but end of the day they are apples they are the same thing so again in case of flowers we have put all the roses together the sunflowers together and the lilies together okay right? so this is how we actually classify things so at every stage of classification we will be looking for more basic characteristics so if you see look at this example of pepper so when you sub classify it further so you can classify it on the basis of color maybe you can classify it into red peppers yellow peppers and green peppers so at this level classification based on color sounds good but if you start classifying objects based on color at this level that doesn't sound good because in that case you will not end up classifying things correctly right so at any stage when you want to classify objects we need to look for the more basic characteristics right so now let us take some examples related to the living organisms in fact we will talk about some real life examples which which is actually true and which actually happens with us so while classifying living organisms also the fact will remain the same that is we need to look at the basic things or the basic characteristics which are similar right and what is the basic characteristic or the what is that basic thing 
or the basic constituent of any living organism it is nothing but the cell because cell is the fundamental unit of life so the basic thing of every living organism is nothing but cell right okay now just think of this scenario so now we got this idea that our basis of classification should be to look at the more basic characteristics now when i talked about the vegetables and fruits i'm sure you'd have understood what do i mean by more basic characteristics right now when i talk about living organisms how would you understand what is more basic let us take this example let us suppose this is a person let us suppose this is you or this is one of us so when you compare yourself with somebody else maybe your friend maybe your teacher maybe your neighbor do you think that they look exactly similar to you they don't right even though they have two ears one nose two eyes one lip they have hairs they have two hands five fingers in each hand so the basic structure is the same but even then you don't look the same right you look quite different now if you compare yourself so first we you compare yourself with your neighbor or friend now you compare yourself with a monkey do you think that you look the same you don't right you feel that oh no not at all we look so different okay but now comparatively do you think that you look more similar to this person when compared to the monkey right now if you compare yourself with a dog or a bird or a small ant or a fish or a microorganism do you at all find any similarity no not at all you can never imagine that you look similar to a bacteria correct so what i'm trying to say is what does this show this actually show that we there are certain things which are quite similar between many organisms for example now if i want to classify objects i can classify this person and this person in the same group because these two persons share a lot of things in common they they are they have lot of similar characteristics now again if you see this person share a lot more similar characteristics with this mon monkey when compared to the dog because in case of monkey also you would have seen that the way it behaves or the way it can stand up or the way uh, it, its behavioral traits they are quite similar to human beings when compared to a dog right again when you compare yourself with a dog who can at least walk and run and do stuff and you compare yourself with a bird you feel that the dog at least have four limbs which even we have but the bird is again totally different so what is this show or how do we know which characters are more basic so from this are you getting some idea that there are certain characteristics which are similar between many different organisms but some there are some organisms with whom those basic characters are also not similar right so how do we know that which characteristics are more basic so for that we will talk about evolution to know that so you must be wondering what is evolution now so we will go we are going to spend a couple of slides on evolution just to understand that what are the characteristics which are more basic in living organisms i am sure you would have understood what i mean by more basic characteristics when i took the example of uh, arranging your room or when i took the example of arranging the fruits and vegetables but in order to understand the more basic characteristics term in case of living organisms we need to know about evolution so let us try to see what is evolution so from this slide what did we conclude that what should be the basis of classification the more basic characteristics should be considered for evolution this is very very important so now let us have a thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material 
find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.